wanted to be married to this man. I do. Step back. Should I have them step back? Step, a couple steps this way, yeah. Thank you. You guys can have your seats. Welcome everyone, thank you for being here to enjoy this beautiful day. Not just the weather's beautiful, but also the beautiful union of marriage that Chris and Caitlin have invited you to experience today. We are here in the sight of God and in the presence of this congregation to witness the beautiful mystery of one man and one woman equal in the eyes of their Savior, transformed into one flesh. As I was thinking about today and preparing for today, I thought of one of Chris's favorite Bible verses. Chris and I used to live together. We used to read the Bible together. One of his favorite verses is in Psalm 139, 16. It says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. As yet, there were none of them yet. And so, God has had a plan for Chris. He has had a plan for Caitlin their entire lives. And we praise him that part of that plan was bringing them to, the, to faith in their Savior, Jesus Christ, and also bringing them together in the covenant of marriage. So, I want to ask you guys these questions. Chris, do you take Caitlin to be your wedded wife, to live with her after God's commandments in the holy estate of marriage? And will you love her, honor her, and cherish her so long as you both shall live? He said, I do. Caitlin, do you take Chris to be your wedded husband, to live with him after God's commandments in the holy estate of marriage? And will you love him, cherish him, and submit to him as to the Lord, so long as you both shall live? What we are witnessing today is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Contrary to what many in our culture believe these days, marriage is a beautiful gift from God. It's a good and perfect gift that God gave even before the fall, before everything hit the fan in Genesis 3 and sin came into the world, God instituted marriage in Genesis 2. It is a beautiful gift from Him of two becoming one. God views marriage so highly that He chose to use it as the illustration to show Jesus Christ's love for His people, the church. Christ is the true bridegroom and the church is His people. And today, we are experiencing an amazing ceremony of two becoming one. And even in the bigger picture, we are experiencing a foreshadowing of the ultimate wedding where God's people, the church, will be presented to their bridegroom, Jesus Christ, without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. We have the perfect bridegroom, Jesus. He is with us in plenty and in one, in sickness and in health, all the days of our lives. And he will never leave us or forsake us. Chris and Caitlin, it is him, Christ, that you must look to if you are going to have a thriving marriage that lasts. Let's look to Christ now through his word. The scripture reading will be Philippians 2, 3 through 11. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you Look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In this passage, I believe, are some of the most important instructions for all of us, but especially for Chris and Caitlin, as they embark on this journey together and commit their lives to each other today. In that passage, 
We are called to have the mind of Christ, which is humble and selfless. We are called to do nothing from selfish ambition, but look to others' interests instead of our own. Selfishness can and will ruin a marriage. If both partners or just one is selfish, things will not go well in a marriage. Chris and Caitlin, God is calling you this day to commit to a life together of doing nothing from selfish ambition and counting each other's interests and each other as more significant than yourself. That's a hard thing to do. That's not the way we're wired as human beings. If you want proof, you can meet my daughter Evangeline. She's one years old. She's over there. And it does she didn't we didn't have to teach her to be selfish. She's wired that way. I'm wired that way. You all are wired that way. So how can I stand here and ask Chris and Caitlin to do nothing from selfish ambition or empty deceit and to count each other more significant than themselves? How can I call them to do that? And how can they do that for the rest of their lives? They must look to Jesus, who is the fulfillment of that scripture. He did nothing from selfish ambition, but he counted others more significant than himself. When you talk about humility, what we celebrate this time of year around Christmas is that Jesus took the ultimate step of humility and became a man in the form of a baby and was born in the most humble estate so that he could rescue his people from their sins. He humbled himself. We must look to him. He counted others more significant than himself. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, ready to go to the cross to die for sins, he was given the option to look to his own interest or to the interest of others. And he said, Father, if there's any way for this cup to pass, let it be so, but not my will, but yours be done. Jesus looked to our interest instead of his own. Jesus lived the perfect and selfless life. He emptied himself. He took on the form of a servant and became obedient to the point of death on a cross so that people like me and people like you could be saved. He lived the perfect selfless life that we could never live and willingly went to the cross as if he was the selfish one. Now anyone who would call upon his name will be saved. They will be forgiven and covered in his righteousness and given power through his spirit to walk in the way that he walked. Chris and Caitlin have called upon Christ's name for their salvation. And I have had the blessing of hearing these stories of how God has rescued them and changed their lives and made them new creations. And I was blessed enough to be there as Chris was a new believer. We both were. We lived together. and We were uh, reading the Bible and, and pursuing Jesus together. And recently, I got to hear Caitlin's story of how Christ saved her. And I guarantee that they would be happy to share with any of you who haven't heard those stories. And they would want you to know that you can call on the name of Jesus for your salvation as well. And God can and will save you. Therefore, I know as I stand here today before all of you that I'm not giving these two a fool's errand to love each other more than they love themselves. Because they are given power from God to walk in the way Jesus walked, to serve one another and look to each other's interests for the rest of their lives. Chris and Caitlin, I charge you to daily look to Jesus and point each other to him as your savior who gave himself for you, as your example to walk in his footsteps and as your power through his spirit to selflessly walk in the way he walked. Chris and Caitlin are gonna exchange their covenant vows so Chris, you can repeat after me. I, Chris, take you, Caitlin, to be my wedded wife. And I promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful husband in sickness and in health, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, as long as we both shall live. Caitlin, get after me. I, Caitlin, take you, Chris, to be my wedded husband. And I promise before God and these witnesses 
to be your loving and faithful wife in sickness and in health in plenty and in want in joy and in sorrow as long as we both shall live next Chris and Kate are going to exchange their covenant rings so Chris do you have a symbol of your covenant love Place the ring on her left ring finger, repeat after me. This ring I give you as a symbol and pledge of constant faith and abiding love. Caitlin, do you have a symbol of your covenant love? Place the ring on Chris's left ring finger and repeat after me. This ring I give you as a symbol and pledge of constant faith and abiding love. There is, we're going to pray and then we have one last thing to do. So let's go to the Father in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the beautiful gift that you give in marriage. We thank you, Lord, for our ultimate bridegroom, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself and looked to our interest to deliver us from our sins. We thank you for Chris and Caitlin, and that we get to experience this chapter in the book on their lives that you have planned and you have ordained. I ask you, Lord, that you would give them the power through your spirit, Lord, to love each other like Christ has loved them to look to each other's interests and not just the interests of themselves. Lord, to do nothing from selfish ambition, but to lay down their lives for each other and serve each other. I pray that you would bless them with a marriage that lasts until Christ returns or until death parts them. I pray, Lord, that if you bless them with children, Lord, that you would give them the help they need and the wisdom they need to train up those children in the way they should go and to train them in the fear and instruction of the Lord. I pray, Lord, for this marriage. I pray that you would bless it. I pray that you would make your face shine upon them. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful gift. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. By virtue of the authority committed unto me by the Church of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Chris, you may kiss your bride. Woo!